it's Alison from Virtuali and I'm just showing you another way to gather people's details or interests for an event and maybe you have an event coming up and you can't decide actually what day to have it and what day suits so people best and a good way to do this actually is with a Google form which is free to use and if you have your own Gmail account all you do is that you log in um, to the app and if you scroll down you see they have all the different options and you can go down to forms and if you can't find forms just go into the search bar for google more and it'll bring up forms so i just started to do one here for um, a walking adventure as a sort of a, a test and the template they have lots of different templates sorry that you can use and you can just um you know copy and edit your own details in. All of this is editable. So I just put this in walking adventure registration and then gauging interest for a walking adventure. And then you decide what fields you want to gather. So you can have first name. It's always good to, to sort of decide what is required. So if you mark this required first name and a short answer, because that's what they need to give. The same with the last name. Um, and their email. I think those are the three things that's always fairly important that you have. If you want to change the order of anything, all you simply do is you click on the little button here, move it up or move it back again. And then you think about the questions you want to ask. So on this occasion, for example, we're asking do, do the people who want to go and walk, do they want to bring a partner or a spouse or a family member and to indicate how many they would like to bring and that's maybe important if you're organizing transport or you're trying to organize it in these sort of times how many people can be out together at once and if you have the different options um, you might actually want to put zero up here so all you do is you move that up there or something like that again required if you want to duplicate something you know have a very similar box here all you do is you press the duplicate button and that creates it. And if you want to delete it, you delete it simply. Then we have the date that suits us best, Saturday the 5th or the 12th. Um, dietary restrictions in case you're going somewhere afterwards, you want to organize lunch and you're trying to work that out or maybe you're organizing a pack lunch for people. And then the very last question I had here was, would you like to be added to our mailing list for future adventure, um, for sure, future adventures and then you can say yes I want to be the first to hear all the latest dates no and I realize I might miss out so it's good to give people a sort of reason why they might miss out or they might be already on it I set this up as a checkbox and I realize now that that is not right it should actually be multiple choice because with multiple choice you can only choose one answer um, so I've changed that one to multiple choice this one um, it is highly possible that you could be, um, I didn't put that in actually, let me see if I can change this then, this also should be, that was multiple choice. So we want this to be a checkbox actually because there is a possibility that you could be vegetarian and also gluten free. Um, I'm gluten free and not great with dairy either so you can put that in, um, dairy intolerant and anything else that you can think of there. So I think that covers all of them. And that is it. With Google, you can have as many questions as you want. I think it's always better not to have more than about 10 really, because otherwise people don't want to fill it out. For this image here, that's also editable. And if you just click on the little um, palette here, you can upload whatever image that you want. You can change the theme color. So I just change this to green, for example because we're thinking about being outside. Um, you can change the, the text of things. So put playful, um, saying we're going on a little adventure. And then if you want to preview it, it comes up like this. And if I go back to that first page, you'll then see the different sending options as well. So when you press send, it just shows you different options. So you can email it and include the form in the email and you can, edit this message as well you can edit the subject of it or you can send as a link so this is a long link and if you press shorten url it shortens it down it shortens it down um, and you can embed that as well so maybe you want to embed it into your um website or something like that if you're gathering information like that um, 
and that's a good way to do it. And then all you do, if you even if you copy it like that, you post it wherever you want it. You copy the link wherever it is into your email, into a Facebook group, into a WhatsApp group, whatever it happens to be. So I hope that's helpful for you today. I'm sorry, just to say as well, the beauty of doing a Google form is that it gathers the answers for you. So if you have the responses here, you have accepting responses, click on here to create a spreadsheet. It says create a new spreadsheet, you call it what you want. Some of you will call it 2020, walking adventure in case you have one every year. And you create that. And then when people fill in the responses, um, you will see here, you'll get their first name, their email, their last name, all of that data. And you can increase the column size here just to make it a little bit easier and um, for you to read afterwards. But that's a great thing. And that's the whole reason of doing a, a Google form like that in the first place, because it makes your life afterwards far easier to work out, okay, how many people are bringing extras? What is the favorite date people want? Do they have any dietary uh, um, requirements, etc.? Here, for example, sorry, I just going to delete that one away because we don't need that one. So that's that. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.